Hey there everybody. So I just bought this brand new M2 MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop. And today I'm gonna to show you how I take my laptops through a development process in order to set it up for software. Basically what I'm gonna take you through is what I install, why I install it, and how it makes me a better programmer. Let's hop into the video. So whenever I buy a new computer, after I go through the initial setup process and everything in there, the first thing I download and install is Google Chrome. I love Google Chrome. I think it's the fastest web browser. I love the personalization to it. And it plus it allows my MacBook to sync seamlessly with my desktop. Some of the reasons I really like using Google Chrome is I actually came from a Pixel prior to switching to the iPhone. So all of my photos are on Google, all my emails are on Google. I use Google Calendar religiously, as well as all of my history and preferences are synced across all of the devices in my home. The next thing I do when getting my laptop set up to program is go ahead and install GitHub. GitHub is a version control software. And what a version control software allows is for you to publish and edit lines of code and track all of your history and changes as you develop your software. What's really cool about GitHub is it allows code to be synced across multiple devices, but not only that, across multiple developers. For me personally, most of my side projects are all just done individually. So the way that I use it is I install GitHub on my laptop and on my desktop and sync the code bushes between them, depending on where I'm working. It allows me to code at home when I want and then go move to a coffee shop when I'm feeling the vibe. When I set up GitHub, I go and follow the SSH protocol on the website. If I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this usually takes hours of time because I have to do it maybe once every other year and forget how to do it most of the time. So the next thing I go and install is my tried and true language, Python. I'm a developer that mainly does data analytics, machine learning, and application-based programming. And Python's been my tried and true language throughout the past two years. When I got this computer, Python wasn't installed. So I had to go to the website and install it. And when I do this, I normally go and install a few different libraries that I'm always using. The first one being Jupyter Notebook. Now I know with notebooks, you either absolutely love them or absolutely despise them. Me personally, I adore them. I love how quick you can iterate on it and use it for visuals in a data application standpoint. Notebooks are absolutely great for prototyping in my mind, but when it comes to revisioning, nothing beats having a Python script and pushing that to GitHub so you have source code to edit on. And in order to do this, you need to have a text editor. Now my tried and true editor as of recently has been VS Code. I actually used to use PyCharm and fell in love with PyCharm's ability to set up packages and just create internal development environments. But recently, I've been more and more impressed with the capabilities that VS Code allows. I found the interface just super intuitive, the autocomplete absolutely wonderful, as well as just being able to run and test code directly in the editor. VS Code gets a big thumbs up in my books. As I said before, the method I'm usually using when I'm developing files is develop a prototype and iterate quickly in a Jupyter Notebook. And when that's ready to be revised and pushed for a final revision, I copy it into VS Code text editor, run it, make sure everything works great, and then push that puppy to GitHub. Next comes all of my productivity applications. And for me, Notion is the absolute backbone behind all that I do. I use Notion for literally everything. I use Notion to keep track of all the projects that I do. I use it for my Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I use it to remember everything I read. And not only that, I use it for restaurant recommendations and to keep track of how many overruns I drink in a year. That's the best beer in the world, Bells you rock. Apart from Notion, the other creativity apps that I find myself using pretty frequently are DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro for my video editing, Lightroom for all of my photos, and then Discord just for my friend spaces as well as productivity spaces with my accountability buddies. The next thing that I've kind of had to install on my Mac is an application called Rectangle. Growing up, I was always a Windows PC, and for my day job, I'm using a Dell all the time. Growing up, I was always a PC user, and even for my day job, I'm always using a Dell. And one of the nicest features on a Windows PC is to be able to take a window and drag it to the side and have it autofill your screen. Personally, I think this is one of the biggest things missing on a Mac. And what this application rectangle does is it allows you to do that exact scenario. Have one coding window that you need to throw to one side, bam, it's on the right. Have a different window that you need to throw on the left for reference, bam, that's on the left side. Not only that, you could use the hotkey presets to be able to customize it however you want. I highly recommend this application because one, it's free, but it also makes organizing and programming your desktop really quick and really seamless. So the next application, I don't think needs many words. Actually, I only think it needs a beat. You have to install Spotify. I'm not an Apple Music user. I've been a Spotify user since 2013 and all my playlists and puppies are right on there. Being a musician, my music is super important to me. 
I find it really interesting that music can be really applicable to a lot of different scenarios. When I'm coding, I find myself listening to a lot of music without lyrics in a very laid back setting. However, if I'm in a really happy or goofy mood when I'm being creative, I'm blasting pop funk. It'd feel foreign to me to not have Spotify on a desktop, so I had to include it in here. And the final thing that I do to set up my MacBook for development is customize it. I follow the customize everything approach. I really like making a device or anything that I own mine. And some of the things that I do to personalize my laptop is I'll change the background, I'll change the icon, I set everything to dark mode, and as well as I'll reduce the size of the dock and the Wintment up bar. So those are some of the tools and methods that I use to set up my computers for Python development. If anybody has any other suggestions on good applications for both productive coding or just better ways that you've seen of doing things, please leave a comment down below because I'd be really interested in hearing. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps my channel and allows me to keep doing these. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.